racing has always been at the forefront of technological advancement and innovation. That doesn't make it cheap. Which means that the average person like you or I will probably never get a chance to drive a GT3 car, an LMP car, or a Formula 1 car in their entire life. But there is a way for us to take part in these high-class racing series on a much, much, much lower budget. I'm talking about the 24 Hours of Lemons. Racing is expensive. Really bloody expensive. Before the budget cap rules were put in place, Mercedes and Ferrari were spending up to half a billion dollars a year in Formula 1. Even professional go-kart racing can cost upwards of a hundred grand now. But there are, of course, more affordable racing events for the average folk. Things like autocross, weekend drag events, amateur banger racing, those are the most common. But like every racing series, there are the big leagues. Even if in this case, the big leagues are still pretty tiny. But a little bit of background. Jay Lamb was working on a 500 mile road rally in California called the Double 500, where you must compete in cars that cost no more than $500. These are called lemons, since they barely work at the best of times and really belong in a scrapyard. Multiple states actually have laws protecting consumers against buying cars like these. They're that bad. Despite this, people are racing them in the double 500 pretty easily. So easily, in fact, that the organizers wanted a bigger challenge and created an endurance race in the spirit of the endurance racing king, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. So, the 24 Hours of Lemons was born, and the first Lemons race took place in 2006 at the Almont Motorsport Park in California, and people loved it so much that by 2008 the series went nationwide with five distinct regions, East, Gulf, Midwest, South, and Western. And from 2016 to 2020, official Lemons events arrived even in Australia and New Zealand. Now, to be fair, most of these races are not the full 24-hour extravaganzas, Rather, they are between 6 and 15 hours long, with the 24-hour events being more sparse, acting as the big shows of the season. And some of these races are actually split across Saturday and Sunday in two-part events, similar to the MX-5 Cup and the Porsche Carrera Cup. So what if you're one of those brave souls that wants to take their car racing? Well, you gotta know the rules first. And the first one, is that the car itself cannot cost more than $500. Any upgrades you do to it are also factored into that figure, except for safety features. Things like a mandatory roller cage, engine shutoff system, racing seat, fire suppression system, and fuel cells are not included in the expenses report. And some racing parts are also exempt, like brakes, wheel bearings, tires, etc. Those are exempt because of safety. If your suspension goes out at turn two, halfway through, you might get speared into somebody else, so it's good to have proper parts on the track. And then there's the more odd things that are exempt. Vanity parts. Things to make your car look really funny or really ugly. It's one of the main charms of the 24 Hours of Lemons. So if you make your car look like a lemonade stand, they're not going to hold it against you in terms of budget. In fact, they might actually give you some budget off. We'll get to the weird rules in a second. There is one technical exemption, although it gets to be really sus real fast. Performance parody parts can sometimes be free. So for instance, if you wanted to swap a Pinto engine into your California Corvette, Godspeed. In fact, there was somebody that swapped a diesel engine into a Porsche 911 that was totaled. So, you know, you can be a little creative there as well. What if you go over? What if you spend a little too much? You just had to get that aerodynamic rear wing. Well, you can still race, but for every $10 above your limit, an extra lap is added to your results. So if you start the race in a $70,000 Shelby GT350, you would start a few thousand laps down from the get-go. And you can claw back some of that lap disparity by selling parts from your car, 
to therefore reduce the price, and humoring the judges. These guys are not the FIA, in fact they're probably smarter than them in some cases, and they're definitely more playful. They have a thing called the BS inspection, which is their automotive safety and price inspection before each race. And it is very rigorous and very thorough. Contestants are encouraged to bring receipts, photos, testimonials, or really good lies to convince the judges that the car really is 500 bucks. And the inspection also decides what class you could put in. There's three classes, we'll go into more detail in a second. But what you need to know right now is that even the officials say the class you get is improvised on the spot based on what they're thinking. It's not very formal, and you of course can get yourself a more favorable classification by bribing the officials, by getting them parts they want from the forums, donate to charities, and you know, making the officials smile with a joke or two doesn't hurt your odds. So there you go, you've made it through the inspection process. It's not very hard. But now you're on the track, and luckily for you, as long as you have a valid driver's license and a teammate, you can go. I mean, they follow basic racing rules like flag meetings and cautions, but there is the black flag rule that's different. Black flags are given to unsafe or unsportsmanlike drivers. Speeding in the pits, ignoring safety flags, or crashing like an idiot will all get you a black flag. The first one is just a brief chat with the officials. The second one is a time penalty, almost always an embarrassing task you have to do for some lighthearted fun at your expense. And they keep going in severity all the way up to the fifth black flag of the day where you're kicked out. And as for on-track incidents, this isn't the FIA. If you get into an accident, all parties are at fault and the officials don't care if you disagree. To quote them directly, your job is to stay out of trouble. If trouble finds you, Take responsibility like a grown-up and figure out how to avoid it next time. This ain't the damn SCCA. That's from their actual website. <laughs> now, one would reasonably assume that a bunch of drivers with nothing more than an Ohio State driver's license are around a track for 24 hours against over 200 other cars that just so happen to be buckets of bolts barely holding together would be exceptionally dangerous. And yet, as far as I can find, only one driver has actually died at a 24 hours of lemons. A 47-year-old had a heart attack on the track in 2008 and hit the wall already dead before impact. But apart from that sad incident, the racing is pretty safe. It helps that a lot of the cars can't hit triple digits without being pushed out of an airplane, but safety is taken just as seriously as a formal event. And considering the entry fee, for the car anyway, is 500 bucks, you get some pretty good prizes. Winning in an A-class car, the highest class available, nets you 400 bucks. A B-class car gets you 500. Winning in a no hope in any way, shape, or form C-class car gets you 600. And they've never had to implement this, but any electric car that costs $500 to win the 24-hour event outright gets $50,000 in nickels. Because everything is a joke for these guys. There's also an index of affluency, which judges award at the end of each race that earns $601 and a free entry into the next 24 hours of lemons. It's sort of like a spirit of the race award, most spirited team. It's pretty nice. Sort of a pun on the thermal efficiency award at Le Mans. Now I will say this much, the 24 hours of lemons organization certainly isn't for everyone. It's the college party version of endurance racing. And if you want a more serious take on Lemons Racing, the Chump Car Endurance Series was founded on that exact premise. But there is a special place for Lemons in my heart. It's super down to earth. It doesn't take anybody or anything barring safety seriously. And it's great affordable fun. Both on and off the track, they now do road rallies harkening back to the original Double 500 routes and the Concourse to Lemons a car show, similar to Concourse Elegance, for the worst cars in the world. And it really proves the point that endurance racing isn't just for rich idiots. It's for normal idiots, too. And sure, professionalism stops on the page after safety, but you can't deny that it's just good fun. And isn't that what racing's all about? 